Good morning, everyone. It is the morning of day four and the rain has definitely found us. It absolutely thumped last night and this morning it's coming in waves. So we're just trying to debate whether we get up and get moving, knowing that we'll get soaked to the bone, whether we take a rest day here. Uh, we haven't decided yet. I guess we probably need to have a coffee before we can make a good decision. But there is something else dun, 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 that's weighing on our minds. Check this out. Up above my sunglasses there, inching along. What do you think that is? That is a leech. Our arch nemesis, which we do not enjoy at all. And given that there's already one climbing on the tent, Katie got one on her foot last night when she went out to go to the bathroom at night. So we can pretty much guarantee if we go out there today, we are gonna get leached, which we have nightmares about still from Wilson's Prom. So it's inclining us to just stay exactly where we are and not move, but probably at some point we have to face reality. In the meantime, we're just lying here watching this with dread in our hearts. Suddenly everything's getting very dramatic. We're obviously tired and we don't wanna get leached. So we'll keep you updated. We're not exactly sure what's gonna happen just yet. time for the Australian animal of the day. And uh, you guys know here in Australia, we have kangaroos, they're kind of everywhere. There's actually two different kinds and I haven't shown you the big kind yet because I haven't seen them. Uh, we also have wallabies, which are essentially like small kangaroos. And then there's this thing in here in Tasmania. I don't know if they're only in Tasmania actually, they're called a padamelon. And there's one right here. I'm at one of the cabins right now. And so this guy is obviously very habituated. You can see he looks a lot like a kangaroo in shape, but he's just really small. And this one actually is pretty big as far as patermelons go. We saw a couple by our swag the other night that were not much bigger than like large rats, to be honest. And when this guy moves around, he does hop just like a kangaroo. But right now, I guess he's kind of sheltering from the rain and he's kind of enjoying because there's no one around at this cabin we're at right now. But yeah, this thing is a padding melon. And so it eats grass, just like a kangaroo. I mean, I'm guessing it's a pretty close relative of a kangaroo, but that's our Australian animal of the day. So we decided in fact to have a rest day and it's been the greatest thing ever. We've dried everything out. We're relaxing, really enjoying it here. We'll probably go for a swim later. And in fact, the rain is holding off, but there still is really low clouds. So we can't really summit any mountains. So I think a rest day was the right choice. And I'll show you around while we're here. One of the great things about the Overland Track is it has a huge amount of infrastructure to help you hike in the nasty weather that they get here. So the first thing is that they supply these tent pads. So it's basically just a big wooden pad where you can put your tent. And I always thought they were pretty lame, but then last night we did camp on the mud, just kind of, there wasn't enough room on the tent pad. And that's why we wound up with leeches. That's why we wound up being a little bit wet and soggy this morning. So we've dried everything out and we've moved over here to the tent pad. And pretty much every campground has like a dozen tent pads, which is really great. Um, they also have really good signs absolutely everywhere. So all the campgrounds, all the junctions, all the side trails, they have these really good signs. And then everything is connected by boardwalks that look like this. And they've got this mesh on them that makes them not slippery in the rain, which I really appreciate. And now as I come down the hill, we start to see kind of the major infrastructure. And they have a cabin like this at every single official campsite on the Overland Track. And so I'll show you around now so you can get a sense of what that looks like. The first building here on my left, these are the toilets or the bathrooms, and they're just drop toilets, but so far they've been really clean, really nice. And these little, these are the canisters, I guess, that they empty from those toilets. They call these things the Sputnik and they've obviously got loops on them because they helicopter them out of here when they're full. Uh, there's a helipad just over that way, actually. And then this is one of the cabins here. Uh, this is, I'd say, fairly representative of what they look like. We stayed at one the other night. Hi, Katie. Hey. 
We stayed at one the other night that was brand new and like really, really plush, like better than any house I've been in almost. One thing they always provide at every campsite is water like this. So it's always rainwater, so it's a good idea to filter it or treat it but it does mean you always have access to water when you're camping, which is super, super helpful. You don't have to go and like find it in a stream or whatever. And then this particular cabin, or this hut as they call them, has this huge big veranda out the front here. And so this is where we've been sitting to cook. Of course, we get the amazing view. That's Mount Oakley that we were up yesterday. Uh, last night we were sitting here watching some wildlife, but this is what it looks like on the outside. This one's really spectacular for that. And then there's no one around right now, so I'll show you what the inside looks like too. And they provide these at every official campsite, which is really great. So they're all laid out a bit differently, but sort of similar. They have this really big area where obviously you cook and you hang out and you sit. People are playing cards in here. There is even in fact a gas heater um, and there's a sign that says don't turn it on unless it's really cold, but there's gas bottles that have been flown in here by helicopter. So, you know, even if you were here in the winter or if it was raining sideways or sleeting, you're not gonna freeze, which is really nice. And then what they provide is bunks for sleeping. And so every cabin they have the layout a little bit differently and you know how many there are and that kind of thing. But you can see really nice, clean little bunk house where you know, set up your thermos, set up your sleeping bag, and you're gonna be warm and toasty in here. This is actually really, really pleasant. Um, and if I wasn't so diehard, Katie and I really love camping. You know, we came out here because we want a tent camp. So that's what we're going to do on this trip. But I'm not gonna lie, if it was snowing or if we actually do get sopping wet, yeah, we're gonna stay a night in one of these cabins. So if you're thinking about doing the overland track, remember this is they are at every single campsite. They do require you to bring a tent and they do say, don't rely on the fact that you'll definitely get bed space because maybe it's full, you know, maybe some people will show up who are really, really wet and cold and they need the bed space and you can sleep in your tent. So chances are you'll probably be in your tent at least a few of the nights on the hike. But I think there are people doing the hike who will be in the cabin nearly every single night of the hike. So it's a valid option and you can see they're really nice. They've often put them in places that have a really great view. Um, yeah, so just the infrastructure here on the Overland Track, it is the most infrastructure that I've ever seen on a multi-day hike. And it does make a big difference. It does make it, I wouldn't say easier, but it kind of makes it more manageable. Even if it's pouring rain, you know you can come here and you can unpack your bag, you can cook and be out of the rain makes a huge difference when you're out for nine days like we're going to be. Good morning, everyone. Here we go back on the trail for day five and our packs are starting to feel a bit lighter. We are, well, today, I guess, marks the halfway point of the hike for us and it is a beautiful clear day. The ceiling has definitely lifted. There was a lot of rain and a big thunderstorm last night, but it seems like today is gonna to be much clearer, which we're really happy about because part of the reason we took that rest day is that today we are hiking past Tasmania's tallest mountain, Mount Osa. And so we've got a couple of hours hiking uphill to get to a big saddle. And then from that saddle, if we wanted to, it's a side trip to go up to the summit and back down again. It'll turn it into another enormous day. We'll be on the trail for 10 or 12 hours again if we choose to go up to the summit. So we're just gonna go along and see what happens when we get there, see how we're feeling, see what the weather's doing. If the clouds roll in and it's pouring rain or we can't see anything, there's not much point going to the top of a big mountain. But if it's looking clear, I certainly want to have a go at getting up there, see how we go. So that's where we're at, day five. And after the summit of Osa, we'll drop down, 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 down to another hut, another campground called Kia Ora. And so that's where we're at, day five begins. All we have to do is put one foot in front of the other, that usual combination. Here we go.
All right, guys, so we just had a 10 minute look at the map and some snacks, and we've decided to go for it. We're gonna try and at least go and have a look at summiting Mount Osa. So it's about a 500 meter elevation gain in the next two and a half kilometers. They say it's gonna take us four or five hours return. So it's no small adventure, and it just, there's some mountains poking out of the clouds right over there in the distance. We don't even know if that's the summit of Osa or if the summit is kind of further back and we can't even see it right now. But anyway, we're gonna go for an hour, maybe two hours, and then just see, see what the clouds are doing, see what happens. There are, you can probably see, there are big clearings of blue that are kind of moving through and moving around. So we don't know exactly what's gonna happen right now. That's Pelion East. That's another mountain that we could go up if we wanted to, but you know, Osa's bigger, so we should go up the big one. So one of the things we love doing in Australia is a cooey and people we camped with last night, we know they're up near the summit. And so if I give a really loud cooey, listen for it, you're gonna hear the echo off the mountain. I'll go. I heard it come back three times for sure, maybe even four, or maybe I made that up. That's a pretty good one, but uh, we, haven't, we haven't heard back from our friends yet. We know they're up there somewhere, but we don't actually know where the summit is, whether it's like further behind or all that stuff. Onwards and onwards. So here it is, the summit of Mount Osa. This is Tasmania's tallest mountain. And the view is a little bit socked in. <laughs> As we were coming up, we could see some of the mountains we've been climbing in the last few days, but obviously I need to drop down a few hundred meters to get out of this cloud layer before I'm gonna see too much more. But <laughs> another beautiful mountain to summit here on the Overland Track. Definitely, definitely worth the side trip. And just the views into the distance to see all the nearby mountains and all these rock spires and everything absolutely breathtaking this just continues to impress and inspire we're gonna sit up here for half an hour eat some snacks with any luck the fog will clear and we'll be able to see a little bit further into the distance mount osa yeah we're just having a good look around up here and it's clearing just fractionally the wind is kind of pushing the low fog around and uh, so i'm just climbing around on all these big boulders and you can see the gaps between them, there's my foot, the gaps between them are just enormous and they go straight down. So from time to time, I just have to go, whoop. I freaked myself out a couple of times. Maybe it's time to go down, Dan. Stop doing that. Good morning everyone, what a beautiful morning it is. This is the start of day seven, and this is where we camped last night. We're on this tent pad. So we're just packing up, making a few final preparations before we hit the trail and check out, this is called the Burt Nichols Hut. So there's the hut, and uh, this is kind of a viewing platform here. Check out the view that we get from here of these stunning mountains. That big one right in center of frame right now, that's called the Acropolis. We're actually planning to go up there today. So our plan is we're gonna head down the main overland track for about an hour and a half. Then we veer off on a side trail called Pine Valley, which everyone has told us is simply breathtaking. We'll go up and we're gonna spend a couple of nights up there in Pine Valley, hiking around and seeing all the sights. So we're getting down to the end now. Today's day seven. We only have two more nights, two and a half more days, I guess. And then we're gonna hike out down the lake. And so a lot of the people we've been hiking with, this is it, they're leaving today's their last day they're actually gonna catch a ferry to get out of here. So uh, it's getting closer and closer to the end, but we still have quite a ways to go. We probably still are gonna hike another 35 or 40 kilometers by the time we add all our side trails. So things are going really well. This is absolutely incredible. I, on one hand, I don't want it to end. On the other hand, I'm looking forward to the hamburger and the hot shower that I know is at the end. So here we go, day seven begins.
right, we're just walking away from Pine Valley Hut. Beautiful little spot here. Check out all of these trees. These things look like something out of Alien somehow to me. But I don't know, they're, they're like halfway between a pine tree and a palm tree and all kinds of things. But we just had a quick bite of lunch, set up the tent, and now we're heading out on a hike. We're gonna go up to the labyrinth we've decided today, which we think is this like big alpine chain of lakes. And so we're gonna gain some elevation and then swap over to a neighboring valley. And then tomorrow morning, we're gonna go up the Acropolis, the big mountain that we saw this morning. So for this afternoon, we kind of don't necessarily have an agenda or a plan. We're just walking through this absolutely beautiful forest. Look how massive these trees are. And side note, this tree looks a lot like a cedar tree from British Columbia in Canada. I don't actually know if it is a cedar. I have no idea if they have cedar in Tasmania, but these things are massive. It is a beautiful spot. Come with us as we enjoy the afternoon sunshine and head up towards the labyrinth. And fingers crossed, we find a swimming spot as well. So here we are at Alicia Lake up here in kind of the semi-alpine. And I have to say, this looks so much like Canada. It's really staggering. And you can see the two massive mountains behind me there. Uh, the one on the left, we just bumped into some girls who went up there today. And then the one on the right, that's the Acropolis. That's where we're headed tomorrow. So it's just so great to be up here and hanging out. We just went for a swim in the lake and just to relax up here in the alpine. This is fantastic. And this side trip by far has been our favorite on the whole Overland track. So if you are doing the Overland track, make sure you come up Pine Valley, make sure you come up to the Labyrinth. And there are people who are gonna camp up here for like three or four nights and just explore around because there's so much up here. So definitely worth the side trip. This is fantastic. We just came up to a high point to get a bit of a view and you can see how incredible it is up here. This is mind blowing. I'm gonna say highlight of the Overland track for both of us to be up here in these mountains. This is fantastic. Now we just have to hike all the way back down to Pine Valley where our tent and all of our food's waiting for us. Let's go and do that. Tell us what's for dinner, Katie. I'm super excited about tonight's dinner. I was a suggestion from our friends Olivia and Andre and we're actually gonna make turkey dinner. Very exciting. So you might notice this is instant gravy and to go along with the instant gravy we've got instant mashed potatoes, instant stuffing, and we even have this instant chicken and it's not actually chicken it's made with pea protein but we're gonna mash that up and uh, it should hopefully taste a little bit like chicken. We're gonna put it all together. We're gonna use that gravy, add a side of peas, and uh, this last little dollop of butter, sprinkled with some cranberries on top. So uh, we'll see how we go. Turkey dinner, I'm excited. <laughs> Check it out guys, this actually worked really well. Right now down here, we have peas, we've got instant stuffing, instant mashed potato, and instant made up chicken. We have two whole serves of it. And then the piece de resistance <laughs> gravy. Look at this. Tell me this isn't Thanksgiving or Christmas dinner on everything, Katie? Yes, please. There is a lot That's of great, there is a lot of food in general. Leftovers are my favorite thing when hiking. So bon appetit. This is delicious.
Good morning everyone and what a stunning morning it is. Check it out. I've hiked up the Acropolis this morning. Here I am on the summit. The view here is staggering. I just got here. You can see I'm covered in sweat and uh, this is a solo mission today. Yesterday Katie had an accident. She spilled a pot of boiling water on her foot while we were cooking and uh, she had her thick hiking socks on so she didn't really feel it or didn't think it was a big deal and it wasn't until later when she took her sock off we realized her feet are blistered and bad and so hiking now has become a bit painful for Katie and so yesterday we hiked up into the Alpine you can see that's the lake we got to yesterday down there in the foreground and we swam in that lake and these are all the mountains that were surrounding us but now this morning I got up at sunrise no I didn't I'm lying I got up at about seven o'clock hit the trail at eight o'clock and it must be nearly 10 o'clock by now. I don't actually know what time it is, but I basically just charged up here as fast as I could uh, because now that I've done this, I have to go all the way back down to camp. You might be able to see the trail there that I took in the foreground. And then in the far distance there, that lake, that's where we're headed today. So that's Lake St. Clair. And there is a camp right at this end of it, uh, Narcissus Camp, I guess it's called. But we're actually gonna keep going for our final night on the trail. Today is day eight, I guess. We're gonna go about halfway down the lake to a point called Echo Point, which we've told we can camp on the beach, there's platypuses in the lake. Uh, that'll be stunning because on our final morning, we have to get up and hike out the final, I think it's 11 kilometers. And then we've organized a shuttle to pick us up uh, at midday. So we have to make sure we're there for midday, which is why today is going to be quite a big day. So now that I've done this all the way back to camp, then all of that, I think it's gonna be another 22 kilometer day or something, but uh, talk about worthwhile coming up here. Check out these rock spires here in front of me. I feel like I could, claw, well, I could nearly get over there and touch them, but it's getting a bit silly now. And given that I'm up here by myself, I don't need to do anything too dangerous. And then there's just all these little jagged piles of rocks. And uh, then there's this other mountain here. You could see this ridge that you could walk along. Then you kind of get to all these spires that are really impressive. We bumped into some girls yesterday. They came at it from the other side. And so they were sort of like in the far distance on the edge of that rim. They said they went as far and, until it turned into like where you would want ropes. And they said, all right, that's far enough. And they went all the way back. But uh, the view from up here, this, this is blowing my mind. I had no idea, honestly, that Australia had this kind of terrain. And something that's really staggering me about it more than anything else, I cannot see any evidence of humans from here. There are no power lines, there are no cut lines, there are no roads, there are no buildings, nothing at all. In fact, I did just see on the lake there, I can see a little boat. That is the first, you know, uh, human evidence on the wildlife or wilderness that I've seen now in all these days that I've been out here. And this is so different. When you're in Alaska, when you're in the Yukon, you can get really remote like this. I've been places like this when I'm moose hunting or when I'm hiking. But even still, you look far out in the distance, you'll see a power line, you'll see a cut line, you'll see evidence of like human exploration for mining or whatever reason they were out there. Here in Tasmania, this is just wilderness. And actually facing to the west, the direction you're looking right now, that is the Great Western Wilderness. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It really just has that one road, that big, the road to nowhere. Other than that, there is nothing there. You know, 40% of this island is National Park or World Heritage Site. So the wilderness here in Tasmania, it is blowing me away. And I'm gonna sit up here for another 10 or 15 minutes, take in the views. I've got a granola bar to eat. Then I'm gonna hot foot it back down to camp, grab the big pack and then just keep moving on. But uh, good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining me. You can tell I'm a little bit excited. Yeah, Tasmania, blowing my mind already. So much more to see.
Something interesting we've just seen on the side of the trail here. Check out this old rotten tree. And you can see there's all bits of it on the ground. Whatever animal has done this has like gouged out huge chunks of the tree. And so if we were in North America right now, I'd say that looks classically like a woodpecker or some other critter that tries to get into a rotten tree, you know, to get out the bugs and whatever. Here in Australia, I have absolutely no idea what did that. As far as I'm aware, there aren't any woodpeckers in Australia. I don't know if there are birds that try to get into a tree like that, or possums do that, or I guess if you know what animal did that, leave me a comment down below. I'm really curious. I have no idea what does that in Australia. Well, everyone, here we are. This is our final dinner on the trail and been a really long day. Both of us are wrecked. Uh, I'm really foot sore after my huge day, but we're on the shores of the lake. We just went for a swim. We set up the tent. You can see there's the mountain across the other side there. That's called Mount Ida. Absolutely breathtaking. And then for dinner tonight, what we have is our very first freeze dried meal of the trip. We've been trying to avoid the freeze-dried ones and eat fresh instead. And so what we've got here it is lamb and mushroom risotto with parmesan cheese on top of it. That was all freeze-dried. And then to add bulk, I put it on some instant mashed potato. It's an old trick of mine from when I used to eat ridiculous quantities of food when I was hiking. Just bring instant mashed potato and add it to the freeze-dried meals. So, Katie, what's the verdict? It's delicious. Katie says it's delicious. <laughs> it's hot, we're tired. Uh, that makes it good food when you're on the trail. So, been another huge day, day number eight, coming to a close. We put up our tent right on the beach. We're just gonna sleep without the fly on it. The weather's amazing. And then we just have a short hike out tomorrow and then the whole overland track is finished. Hard to believe. Yeah, so that's it for us for today. We'll see you guys in the morning. Good morning everyone, here we are at the final campsite. We're all packed up, we're about to hit the trail. So this is Echo Point campsite on the shores of the lake. And uh, we heard that there's a platypus family that lives here. And so we've been keeping an eye out, but we haven't actually seen them in the last 12 hours or so that we've been here. So now we just have 11 kilometers to go and the trail is all finished. This is day number nine, the final day. We're headed that way down, not actually to the end of the lake. I guess there's a visitor center down there and there is a cafe and it has a thing called the Overland Burger. So I have to say, that's what I'm thinking about right now. And that's what's motivating me to keep going. So the final day, we're about to hit the trail. Stick with us, we've almost finished the Overland track.
So here it is guys, the final few steps and the sign. That is it, we have just finished the overland track from Cradle Mountain and Ronnie Creek all the way we went south. Now we're at Lake Sinclair Visitor Center. Overland track complete, Katie. Woo. Well done. <laughs> Woo! You're gonna beat us to the burger. <laughs> So here we are back at the Jeep, we've come full circle and it's always good to see your vehicle completely untouched when you've been gone for so long. Everything's perfectly fine, surfboards on the roof, all of that kind of stuff. And there's a few things that I like to do as soon as I get to my vehicle. First one, I already put flip flops on. First time in nine days I've had anything other than my hiking shoes on. Second thing that's fun to look at is the status of the auxiliary battery. So I left the fridge on the whole time we've been gone, that's the 55 litre Dometic fridge. And without even getting out my phone and pairing it, I can just look at the Renergy charge controller here and see the status. Green light on the battery means that it's 100% full. This solid red light means we're currently making solar. And the flashing red light means that because we're making solar and there's nowhere else to put it, the charge controller is actually trickle charging the starter battery of the Jeep. So not only is the 50 amp hour OGS battery enough to keep up with the fridge and the 100 watt solar panel keeps it full, it actually can trickle charge the battery of the Jeep. And that's after nine days of sitting here without starting the engine. So if there was any doubt whether the solar panel can keep up with the fridge, I think that's a definite yes. And that's in a place like Tasmania, which is notorious for being overcast and pretty gray. So 100 watts is easily keeping up with my 55 liter fridge running 24 seven. It's just been turned on the whole time I was away. Ah, there's drinks in there and some food things that hopefully haven't gone bad. And then the final thing when I get back to my car after a hike, car chips. So before we went on the hike, we bought these, we stashed them in the Jeep. This was a gift to our future selves who have arrived here now 10 days later to snack on the bounty of car chips. You can tell I'm pretty excited about that. So thanks very much for watching guys. This has been an enormous hike, a lot of fun. I hope you've enjoyed watching it. If you have, please do hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. There are plenty of adventures left to have in Tasmania before we even get out and explore the rest of the enormous Australian continent. So stick around, plenty more to come. Have fun out there and maybe I'll bump into you on the road.